What's up guys, we are back with another Star Wars review, but today we're taking a look at some brand new vintage collection figures that I have just been eagerly awaiting. And uh, they sort of popped up in stores out west, and then they sort of vanished for a while. And I've been hunting for these for quite a while, but I got lucky and my Amazon pre-order finally shipped. We're taking a look today at the vintage collection Mandalorian Cara Dune and... Mandalorian. So two big heavy hitter figures for the vintage collection that frankly should have been out a long time ago. Mando in particular. I still don't know why he wasn't out on Force Friday, but we finally got him and I'm really excited to take a look at these. So we've got him here on the standard vintage collection style vintage-esque card backs. You've got shots of Cara Dune and Mandalorian in all their glory with the figures in the little bubbles. And then the back of the package has got some basic cross sell for the more recent and slash current waves. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here they are out of the package are Mandalorian and Cara Dune vintage collection figures. Without a doubt, some of the most anticipated figures in the Vintage Collection right now, just because of, well, a lot of things, really, because of how amazing the Mandalorian is, because how awesome the Black Series figures are, and because of how damn good these have looked for the months that we've been waiting for them. And I'd say, just at point blank, we are absolutely getting exactly what we thought we were getting, two incredibly stellar Vintage Collection figures. So we're going to take a look at each one individually, obviously. I am going to start with the Mandalorian because, well, why not? So let's pull him aside and see what he's got going on. So as far as moving the Mando around, he's basically everything you want a Vintage Collection figure to really be as far as what they've given him. So I'm going to take the, the gun off his back for reasons you probably already know, just based on the Black Series. The head can look up a little bit. It can look down. It's a double ball peg. You've got tilt side to side and then rotation. Arms go out at the shoulder. They rotate. You've got a single hinge, but really good range of motion there. Way better than 90. And then you've got rotation at the elbows as well. Vertical hinges and rotation at the wrist. You've got your diaphragm cut for backwards, forward, side to side, and then rotation. And then you've got pegs that go up into the torso from the hips. So his legs go out and then you can swivel there as well. You've got rotation at the thigh cut. You've got a single rotating knee. A little better than 90, though. And then you've got hinges, and you've got rotation down at those ankles. So, I mean, it's pretty standard as far as what you would expect out of the Vintage Collection, but he really has everything that I would want. There's not a whole lot missing outside of maybe an ankle rocker, which is pretty much not something we see with this line too often, if ever, that I can think of. So he's really got just about everything. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, this is another instance where it's kind of similar to the Black Series, just in the scope of the figure, because this is, of course, the early look for the Mando, the early first appearance type of look, so he doesn't really have, you know, any Beskar going on. You've got Scarif Trooper parts and things like that all over him still, like, on uh, the shoulder pads here, but, I mean... I dig this look. I like the scavenged armor look that he originally has. Granted, I love the Beskar look uh, quite a bit, but this is a cool look for the Mando, and I think they executed it just pretty flawlessly, honestly. There is so much going on with this figure from, well, a number of paint applications to small, fine little details, little bits of wear and kind of wash, and then, of course, the uh, little blast points on the armor for the little silver uh, metallic specks that are peeking through. I really dig everything that's going on with this guy. I think they've got just a tremendous amount of sculpt, excellent paint application, just in terms of quality control, because nothing, and I mean nothing, is out of place on this figure. Everything seems to be exactly Exactly where it's supposed to be. All of the colors and lines are really clean and crisp, and he just looks so great. I mean, it just looks, and I'm going to say it again, it looks like a scaled down Black Series figure. It really does. It comes across just this same kind of shelf presence and wow factor. He's got the same kind of cape that the Black Series does, that kind of pulled to the side, uh, rubbery plastic. It doesn't really do anything. It just sits there. It's not going to get in your way, though. It doesn't really hamper articulation. You do have the harness that I've already talked about, uh, which does have a lot of detail and paint on its own, but it does have the double peg system for holstering the gun. This does seem to work a little better than the Black Series. I think the holes and everything are just a little bit more aligned correctly, but in a general sense, 
he's an awesome figure from a looks perspective. I mean, it looks like this guy just jumped right out of the screen. And of course, the helmet is a huge, huge factor in that. I think the sizing is really well done. There is some nice wear along the crest of the helmet. Visor's really clean and crisp. And it, it just, you know, it looks a little worn. It looks a little dirty at this point, which, which very much works. But it definitely gives you that Mando feel, this specific Mandalorian. And they did a great job with that color scheme. It kind of pops against the rest of the figure because it's got it's got that very gunmetal shiny metallic feel to it now as far as accessories goes he's basically got what you expect two accessories two different guns so you've got the pistol over here in his holster right now and this is basically just a scaled down version of the black series gun so you've got a pretty decent sculpt silver paint and then uh, you've got some brown for the stock the handle there and i mean it looks fine it's a little gun for the most part though i'm always going to have it in this holster because of of course you know the big Fancy gun here, the big assault rifle, blaster rifle, and this thing looks really good. There is a tremendous amount of sculpt on it. A decent number of little paint applications, but for me, the big thing about this one is just how stable it is when it's pegged into the figure. I've already kind of mentioned it. I think it fits in better than the Black Series does. I think they maybe kind of fixed that for this particular version, going back to seeing exactly where they could make it a little better. I think the peg is a little bit longer uh, comparatively in terms of just, you know, its relative size. So it fits in there really nicely. It pegs in just fine. And then once it's in there, uh, it just stays. I've had no problem with it. So it's got a good sculpt, good paint applications, and ease of use for keeping it on his back is a big, big plus for me. Now, with Cara Dune, it's really more of the same. Basically, she feels like a scaled-down Black Series figure, which, frankly, is a good thing because her figure was so fantastic. And as far as moving her around, she's basically the same kind of figure as the Mandalorian. They are practically identical in their articulation schemes. So you've got a head that can look up, and she can look down. She can tilt side to side and rotate. Arms go all the way out, and then they rotate at the shoulders. You've got your single rotating elbow. She doesn't have as much range as the Mando, though. Uh, same kind of joint, though. You've got vertical hinges and rotation at the wrist, and then you've got your torso cut for side to side, backwards, forwards, and then rotation, kind of bobbling all the way around. She's got pegs that go up into the hips from the legs, so they go out, and then you can swivel them as well. Rotation at the thigh, single rotating knee, and then you've got hinges and rotation down at those ankles as well. So, I mean, they're basically the same, but that's great because they move just about as well as any vintage collection figure can move. And there's really nothing stopping you from putting them into really dynamic poses for this scale. Now, as far as the overall look and feel for Cara Dune, there's really not much to gripe about. This figure looks basically, again, like a scaled-down Black Series figure. There is a lot going on here, uh, just in terms of the overall sculpt, as far as the armor pads, the kind of carbon fiber weave that's on her uh, her body armor on the torso. Little things like the line work from the black to the, the turquoise color, really crisp and clean. And then all of these other kind of asymmetrical patterns with this kind of pad over here. And then you've got the canisters, knee pads on this this side which has a little bit of wear on it she does have her knife over here it's unfortunately sculpted in but I, I like the fact that they included that little nod frankly i'd have probably lost that by now anyway you've got the the tattoo that's on her right arm your left of course really done nicely crisp and clean colors are are really vibrant and kind of pop against the skin tone and the face is just tremendous it's not i wouldn't say it's as good as the black series just because of the fact that you know you're losing a lot of real estate between the two but it definitely looks like her. You've got even got the uh, you know the rebel insignia tattooed on her face. It's it's kind of hard to make out. It kind of looks like a little fuzzy dot, but it's it's also pretty obvious when you get really close in there what that's supposed to be. The photo reel is nicely applied. The hair looks really good as far as the asymmetrical design, sculpt work, colors. Everything here just works. And she's already got a cool look about her anyway, based on the body armor that she wears. But it's executed in this figure just really well. And just like the Mando, she comes with exactly the same kind of stuff that you would expect. So she's coming with her uh, blaster pistol here that's in her holster. So you've got this little guy, decent sculpt on it, nothing too crazy, a little bit of silver, a little bit of brown, little viewfinder on it, fits in the holster really well, just like the Black Series figure. So no issues there, but then she's got, you know, the gun everybody truly cares about, the big, uh, you know, heavy double barrel 
uh, or double canister gun here, which looks really good. It is a little flimsy in the package, so you might have to reshape it, at least mine was. But the sculpt look, looks really good. You've got the you know kind of brown to gunmetal color with the silver barrels at the end, the strap, so you can hang it over her shoulder if you want. And then it's got the little handle for her to carry it one-handed if you'd like. She does hold it pretty well in two hands, so there's really not a whole lot to, to have issue with on this one. I do wish we had, you know, that knife that could come out just to have it, but at the same time, like I said, I'd have probably lost it by now. So this is the gun of choice for her, and I think they did a really good job uh, executing on this to give it as much detail as possible while it being relatively small. So, yeah, these are two solid vintage collection figures, and I kind of expected that. I was hopeful of that, but frankly, after having seen the success stories that were their Black Series figures, I kind of figured it was only going to translate to vintage collection, and I said it a number of times, these really do feel like scaled-down Black Series figures just given the articulation scheme of the vintage collection, and that's a good thing because those figures were fantastic, and these are easily some of the best vintage collection figures that I've messed around with in quite a while. I am, at this point, Point. still behind on some of them, but these are two to get for sure. I know there's a reason why people are paying a decent amount of money on the aftermarket for these, because they are hard to get, but they are incredibly, incredibly well done. So when you get a chance to grab these, don't sleep on them. You're going to have a great time with this set of figures. So that's going to do it for this look at the Star Wars Vintage Collection, Mandalorian, and Cara Dune. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time...